Hello everyone. Uh, today uh, we'll see a new proof, basically, uh, which is called the midpoint theorem. Okay. Uh, so we'll also see that what midpoint theorem is, and uh, we'll also see that how you know, to prove it. Basically, the proof of it as well. Okay. So let's first uh, see the statement of the. Okay. So I'm writing that now. And you all are watching that it matters. Uh, first of all, Okay. It says the line joining the midpoints of any two sides. So these are the midpoints of any two sides. Now let's join them. is parallel to the third side. That means our target is to prove that PQO will be parallel to PC. Not only that, we also have to show that this PQO will be half of PC as well. Okay. So now since it's a proof and always keep in mind that whenever you are doing a proof, after writing the statement, this is basically the statement, correct? Now after writing the statement, you should always write that what is your, according to your figure, because this figure was not there. Okay, because it's a general proof. You have made the figure, you have named everything. So you have to write whatever you have made. Okay, so let's write. So let's write what is given. Okay, so let's write the normal information only. That P and Q are the midpoints of AB and AC. Okay, now what is our target to show? So we write two proof. That means what is our target? We need to show that PQ is parallel to PC and PQ is equal to half of PC. Now this is our main target. Now to prove this theorem, we will need a small construction. Okay, so I'm writing construction. And this should be the proper way of always writing a proof in exam. First the statement, then what is given, then what do you want to prove? Then construction if it is required for that particular proof, and after that, after that the main. Okay. Now let's see the construction. Now our construction is draw a line parallel to BA. Okay. So draw C. Let's name it as Y. Let C Y parallel to BA. Okay. This point is Y. Such that it means PQ produced such that it means PQ produced. See, I'm producing Q, PQ, and then we need Y. So draw CY parallel to PA such that it means PQ produced at Y. You can see that these two are meeting at the point one. Okay, so now the construction is complete. Now we'll go to the main proof. Let's start with the proof first. Now the starting is very simple. We just target these two triangles, this one and this one. Prove that these two are congruent. Okay, we all know congruence, so we can go for congruency of these two. So we mention the triangles first that in triangle APQ and triangle CYQ. Okay, now let's see what we have in these two triangles. First of all, since we already know that Q is the point of this side. So obviously we can say that AQ will be equal to QC. This is given since Q is the midpoint, right? Next, now see these two, we all know these are vertically opposite angles. We will mention it that angle AQP is equal to angle CQY and we write the logic beside it that's vertically opposite angles. Vertically opposite angles. Okay? Third, now see, since these two are parallel, we have constructed in that way that CY is parallel to BA. So these two are becoming alternate angles, right? So we will say angle PAQ is equal to angle QCY, alternate interior angles. Okay, now so we got three things. Okay, and we also need to see that our criteria for congruency is satisfied or not. So we have taken angle, angle and the side is included. That means by A is A, we can say that these two triangles are congruent. Okay, so let's write that. Therefore, triangle APQ is congruent to triangle CYQ and the criteria will be A is A. Okay, I think it's, we are pretty clear up till here that these two triangles are congruent. Now, since these two are congruent, so can we 
be said that uh, therefore uh, what I want to tell is PQ is equal to PY by CPCT we can say that that means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal we already know that okay and one more thing we can also say that AP is equal to YC just write in bracket the CPCT okay now these two are very important results that we are going to use later on for the proof okay now since we have already written the statement here so I'm going to remove the statement and going to continue on the job okay now so till now whatever we have done is we have done the congruency and whatever we have got from the congruency as a result that we are going to use now okay now let's see what to do next okay now what is our first target is to show that these two are parallel okay now to reach there we have to do a small thing now see i'm doing it first of all since ap is equal to pb obviously because p is the midpoint of the side Okay, and one more thing we have received, like we have got from one principle result that AP is equal to YC. Now see, AP is equal to PB, AP is equal to YC. So obviously we can say, therefore, PB equal to YC. So this one and this one are equal. We have proved it. Okay, not only that, we also know that these two are parallel to each other according to our construction, right? So you mentioned and CY or YC whatever you want to write is parallel to PB since since you write that uh, CY is parallel to PA that's why so obviously this line is parallel to PA it will be parallel to PB as well because it's the same line okay so what we actually have got that these two sides are not only parallel to each other they are equal to each other as well and we know that in a quadrilateral any one pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal at the same time, so that quadrilateral is always a parallel. Okay, so we are going to conclude here. Therefore, B C Y B is a parallel. Okay, this is the property of a quadrilateral. Okay, it's basically a theorem. Uh, those who know it, it's well and good. Those who don't know it, can refer to that uh, theorem that if for any quadrilateral, if one pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal at the same time, then you can directly say that that quadrilateral is a parallel. Okay. Now, after proving that BC by P is a parallel ground, so obviously we can say that therefore P by is parallel to BC. It's a parallel ground, so we can say these two opposite sides are parallel to each other. And now, if P by is parallel to BC, then we can say PQ is parallel to BC. Because PQ and PY they are basically the same set. Now if you focus here, we have actually got the first part of the proof that is PQ is parallel to BC. So first part we are done. Now what is our next target to show? Our next target is to show that PQ is equal to half of BC and that will be very easy. See here. Now since we have proved this is a parallelogram, so obviously we can say that PY is equal to BC. As we know that opposite sides of the parallelogram are equal, so let's write it. Opposite sides of parallelogram. Uh, this is the notation of parallelogram. Okay. Now, so these two are equal. Now, I'm going to break P Y into two parts. So basically, I'm breaking it as P Q plus Q Y. Okay. Like we see here, earlier we have already proved that P Q and Q Y are equal, right? So I'm going to replace QY by PQ. So that will become PQ plus PQ is equal to BC. So that means twice of PQ is equal to BC. So therefore we are getting PQ is equal to half of BC. That was our second part that we need to prove that PQ is equal to half of BC. And we have proved that. So basically what we are concluding from this theorem that if we join the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle, then that line segment is going to be parallel to the first side and is equal to half. So this is what midpoint theorem is. Okay, I hope you all have understood the proof of the theorem and